Blessings to you, blessings to you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in God's goodness. Um, I want to talk about a very controversial topic. Um, very controversial topic. I won't be long. I'm really long. Um, I want to talk about a dream I had through the Holy Spirit. Um, can a Christian have a demon? Can a Christian have a demon? I've been pondering that for some a very long time. Um, and I've been on and off for fast, but on and off through fasting prayer. Um, <clears throat> and I asked the Lord earlier this this week on Monday, and I was looking at some videos, seeking the truth, seeking the truth, and under or just understand. Um, and it was until it was probably yesterday morning um, that I had this dream and the visitation. Um, and I want to set some preliminaries before I really display and talk about that dream. First Thessalonians 5. It says, um, by verse chapter 5, verse 8, 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely or wholly, perfectly that you may be whole or complete, functional and healthy <clears throat> and holy in your spirit, sanctified in your spirit, sanctified in your soul, and sanctified or holy and healthy in your body. Be preserved blameless without spot or healthy at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who allows, who also will do it. Let me see, hold on, hold on. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. So watch this here. Paul is talking to Christians, talking to believers. And he says, God doesn't just want us to be sanctified in our spirit. The spirit is the Ruach of God. Where God breathed into Adam. The Bible says in Genesis, God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. So every human being has a spirit and is a spirit. That's your your spirit comes from the spirit of God. Uh, <clears throat> it is what makes us spiritual. We're all spiritual beings and we have a soul. The soul is the part of us. Uh, the spirit and the soul are intangible. They can't you can't touch it with a needle or a knife or a pen or anything physical. It is it is intangible, but it is real. Uh, when the breath comes out of our body, we are our body becomes uh, no longer living. We're, we're known as dead. We flatline. Um, so the spirit and then the soul is the com composed of <clears throat> our personality as well as our minds, how we think. Uh, our personality, our will, and emotions and desires. And then you have the body. So we're not just, what he's saying is God doesn't just want, want us sanctified in our spirit, but he wants us sanctified and whole. And the word also blameless means, it's tamim, it's a Hebrew word. It means healthy. Healthy in our spirit, soul, and body. So you can be healthy in your spirit, in your spirit man, and unhealthy in your in your emotions and have unhealthy emotions. You can be healthy in your spirit and have an unhealthy will. You can have unhealthy thinking, but be holy or sanctified in your spirit. And you can be holy in your soul and righteous in your soul um, and not holy in your body. But because they're all intertwined, um, they affect one another. They do affect one another. Um, um, matter of fact, Hebrews um, Hebrews four. Let me just set a foundation before I really get this to you. Hebrews four and twelve. For the word of God, Hebrews four and twelve says, "For the word of God is living and powerful." And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit, and the joints and marrow, 
and is a discerner of thoughts and intent of heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked or exposed and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. We're all going to give an account. What he just said is the word of God, the, the word of God and the spirit of God in the mind of God can discern between the soul and the spirit. Why? When he mentions bone and marrow, joints and bone, when you have a, a bone is a bone all by itself, but within a bone, there's marrow in the center of that bone. And you actually have to crack it and break the bone to get to the marrow. But it's all known as the bone. Um, so it's a bone with, with sinews in it and, and, and joints. It has a joint and the joints are part of the bone, but they connect one bone to another bone. But it's all one bone. So he uses this example as a bone. So a bone has joints, marrow, and other parts in the bone. But it's known as a bone. Um, and so the same thing with the human body. Um, the Bible says God is there in 1 John 5. Speaks of the, there are three witnesses, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God says, let's make man in our image. He says that us, meaning in the Hebrew, the word God is Elohim. It's really a Hebrew word that means more than two. More than two. Um, so that's the Father, Son, and the Holy Father, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so as, just like God, we are made up tripartite. Tripartite, or we're, we're triune in, in essence, the spirit, soul, body. For a long time, I had a hard time um, agreeing. I was actually struggling with this, if a Christian could have a demon. The word demon in the New Testament is used. It's daimonizoma, D-A-I-M-O-N-I-Z-O-M-A-I, okay, daimonizoma. The way the King James Version translates it means possessed. That is not a proper translation. It just means to have a demon. <laughs> Having a demon simply meant or was meant a person that was under the influence of a demonic spirit or a disembodied spirit or unclean spirit or perverted spirit or just a demon, disembodied spirit. Um, it can it could it also could meant a person that was sick or with a, with a spirit of infirmity, um, or someone that was being tormented with epilepsy, um, someone that just being just being tormented by demonic spirit, and there were different manifestations. Uh, so just like I spoke about the three aspects, the spirit, the soul, and the body, um, you can have a demon in your body, but not have it in your spirit. You could have a demon in your soul and not have it in your spirit. But you could have a demon in your soul and it, and it will affect your body. Understand? Um, the unbeliever does not have the Holy Spirit because they haven't been born again. That's why Jesus said you must be born of the Holy Spirit to enter the kingdom of God. Your spirit man is born of the Holy Spirit and renewed. And regenerate it. But the Bible says we must be renewed in the renewing of our mind. That's the soulish realm. That's the soul. That's the soulish realm. Your spirit is new, but your mind and soul are new. The Bible says through the sanctifying of the soul, that our soul be saved. Through the sanctification of the soul and the mind and the will or our orders, or watch this being renewed by the by the spirit of our mind, Paul said that as well. So the mind must be sanctified. The soul has to be sanctified. And when the soul is not sanctified, it gives room to the enemy. Um, and so forth. But I want to talk about this dream. And I just want to lay some preliminaries. Um, I, I did have a, a problem with agreement with it. Um, I believe Christians could be oppressed. Most definitely, I've been oppressed. Um, uh, spiritual warfare is a given. We're all going to go through spiritual warfare. And so um, I laid to rest. I asked God Monday. Um, this is uh, uh, January. Uh, this is January. Uh, I believe it's the 29th. I believe don't, don't quote me on it. Don't have my calendar. But uh, uh, actually, Monday, regardless of the, of the date, uh, actually, Monday, Lord, can a Christian be not demon possessed, but have a demon in the sense of being influenced by a demonic spirit or a demon or dwelling in their body or their soul? <laughs> possessed means to own. Demons can't own believers. God owns the believer. And so here's what happened. I went to sleep um, and I saw a hand. I saw a body, a body, just a, a body by itself. And I saw a hand come from heaven, from, from the sky. And that hand pointed to the belly of that human being. The belly, the person was like this. It wasn't moving. I said, that. pointed to the belly. And said this, 
this is the spirit. Imagine, I want you to get a picture of a, a person lying down. That's how it was. The hand said, this is the belly. I mean, this is the spirit. And a little above the belly button, the finger in the hand said, this is the soul. And as he was speaking that this was the soul, it was as if he pointed to the brain as well, which represents also the mind, will, and emotion as well. And so, and that was it, and I woke up. <clears throat> the way he was giving it to me was even that of the tabernacle. The tabernacle was one temple, but there were three compartments or parts of the tabernacle. You had the outer courts, you had the holy place, and you had the holy of holies. The holy of holies was where the mercy seat was, the, 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 uh, the yearly sacrifice would be made. Um, and also the, the presence of God will be there. The presence of God was in, wasn't in the outer courts. The presence of God was in the holy place. The presence of God, there was a curtain, and then you went into the holy place. There is the dividing place between the spirit and the soul, but only God, remember Hebrews 4 says, it is the word of God that can separate the soul from the spirit. Only, the, only God can really separate the soul from the spirit. And, in, and it's the finger of God that did it in that dream. God was saying, Antoine, there's a difference in the spirit and the soul. And then there's the back. And when he did that and I woke up, I was like, wow. And to this day, I'm not gonna lie to you, it still baffles me because the mind of God goes beyond man. But a person can, can be born again of the spirit, in their spirit, and be oppressed and under the influence of the enemy in their soul. It's a different compartment. Think of it as a compartment or even as a house. You know, you have one room, that's your room, and then somebody else's room got another room. Basically, it's kind of like that. But it's my house. Um, but they're just taking up residence in this other area. Um, and then even Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow living the rivers of living water, which he spoke of the Holy Spirit. It's out of your belly. And I have for years have felt the Holy Spirit in my belly. So that's what your spirit is. The Bible says the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. But if our soul is not sanctified and holy and righteous, the enemy takes precedence in the soulish realm of the, of the believer. But he takes dominance in the, in the precedence, in the habitation of the spirit of the unbeliever. The unbeliever doesn't have any control at all. Uh, but the believer uh, does have an advantage. I'm thanking God for the revelation. I hope this adds clear clarity and understanding. Um, I pray that we be edified and brought to the unity of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Ephesians 4, and be lifted up um, that we brought to unity. Um, God loves you. God cares about you. Um, Father, and then let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind and rebuke every demonic spirit over the airways that hear me right now. Anybody that's being tormented in their soul or spirit, I rebuke and bind and cast out that demon right now. I have authority over every demonic airway, over every demonic thought, through the sound of the Holy Spirit that comes through my belly and through my spirit. I pronounce freedom to you now. I rebuke and bind every principality, power, ruler of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. I cast you out and I command you to leave them and torment them no more. I rebuke you and you are un you are subject to my authority in Christ Jesus. I am far above you and seated with Christ in heavenly places, Ephesians 1 and 26. I am above you, not beneath you, and I have authority over you. And I bind and rebuke you and cast you out. And you cannot torment them anymore by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pronounce freedom over your mind soul and spirit. And, and he said, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24 says, God is faithful and he'll do it. God is going to sanctify his people. God's going to sanctify your spirit, your soul, and your body to the day of the Lord. I pronounce sanctification in your soul, in your spirit, and your body. And we sanctify the soul by rebuking every demon that's in the soul, in the soulless realm. I bind the re and rebuke every demon that's tormenting your will. I bind and rebuke and cast out every demon that's tormenting your emotions, in your desires, in your intellect, in your personality, and your ability to move forward. I bind it right now. By the Holy Spirit, I pronounce peace, joy, and love right now. And sanctification, the Spirit of God, permeate your soul right now. And I cast out demonic spirits in the soulless realm of your body, in the deep crevices of your soul. 
in the hidden places of your soul right now, through your bloodline, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and I rebuke and cast out spirit of infirmity in your body that's dwelling in your temple in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I speak to them right now that the Holy Spirit invade every area of their spirit, soul, and body and sanctify them holy to the day of the Lord. First Thessalonians 5, 24 says, God is faithful and he will do it. God will sanctify you in your spirit, soul, and body to the day of the Lord. Bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God loves you. And God is going to do it. First Thessalonians 5, 24. He is faithful. Let me read that again. First Thessalonians 5, 5, 24. He is faithful who, who, who has called you and he will do it. God's going to do the work. God's going to finish where he started. God's going to sanctify your spirit, sanctify your soul and your body in the name of Jesus. You are sanctified by faith in Jesus Christ in your spirit, soul, and body. And I pronounce sanctification and holiness and wholeness, healing and functionality in your spirit, soul, and body through the power and the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every area of your life and I rebuke the enemy. And I pronounce peace and joy and wholeness and healing in your spirit, soul, and body. Through the blood of Jesus, I declare and decree this over you as a man and a prophet of God. You are healed, free, and delivered by the Holy Ghost. Satan, you have no power over them right now. I rebuke you. You have no power and authority over them. I pronounce the power of the Holy Spirit to overwhelm them and overshadow them and expose every lie, every dysfunctional thought, every dysfunctional desire, every demonic, every demonic assignment and lie over them right now that I hate you. I pronounce peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit to permeate their spirit, soul, and body. And remove every demonic, every demonic worm and insect from them in the name of Jesus. I rebuke spiritual larvae in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and bind up spirit, spiritual demonic semen and spirit, demonic sperm right now. I rebuke and bind up demonic sperm right now in the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke demonic sperm right now. I bind and rebuke demonic spiders and demonic spider wheels and cobwebs. I rebuke and bind it right now over you right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and bind demonic viruses and fungus. I rebuke and bind demonic bacteria in your blood, in your spirit, in your soul, in your mind. I bind and rebuke it through the Holy Spirit and cast it out of you, right? By the Spirit of God, by the power of God. I decree and prayer healing over your whole spirit, soul, and body by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, you are sealed in your spirit, soul, and body to the day of the Lord. And he is faithful and he's going to do it who has called you. In Jesus' mighty name, the power of God, the finger of God, and the kingdom of God are on your life. And Satan, you have no authority and no territory upon them. In the name of Jesus, by the power of God. The blood of Jesus covered them. I plead the blood of Jesus over the spirit, over the soul, over the body to cleanse, to purify, to cleanse and purify every sinful place and unclean place. You say, we are faithful and just to forgive us for all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent of your sins. Repent of anything you've done. Repent for your ancestors. Repent for your ancestors right now. Repent for your ancestors. Ask for forgive God to forgive your, and our, your ancestors and forgive you so you can be cleansed in your soul, in your spirit. Forgive people. Start forgiving people. Start forgiving and replay this. Start forgiving people. Because you can't be delivered with unforgiveness. Start forgiving people. That's a that's a um, that's a legal right. That's a legal right. Start forgiving people. Forgiveness is your is 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 the breath of freedom. Forgiveness is the breath of, of freedom and deliverance and healing. You gotta forgive, you gotta let it go. When you let it go, the Satan will let you go. Demons will let you go when you let it go. God will forgive you if you forgive. Matthew 8. Matthew 18, 35. God can't forgive you if you don't forgive. And if you're in an unforgiven state, demonic spirits can torment you. Demonic spirits torment people when you have unforgiveness in your heart, bitterness and hate. Get rid of the hate. Start forgiving people. How do you forgive? Start praying for them. Start blessing them. Start asking God to have mercy on them and, and blessing them and forgiving them and loving them. Start praying good things over them. <clears throat> See yourself forgiving them. See yourself doing something well for them. That's, that's working in obedience. That's being obedient. And them spirits will leave. They can't, they can't, they can't hold, <clears throat> they can't hold to you. God bless you, God loves you, He cares for you. He who has called you, first Corinthians 5, 24. He who has called you will finish it and will do it. What will he do? He will sanctify you and preserve you. Your spirit soul and body to the day of his coming.
Kardeşi Dalla Bey'in 